Just arrived at Tom Warner Cable. Let's get going. I go to shoot arounds, which is essentially the equivalent of a light practice, uh, especially for the road games when I'm with the team. Um, so from there, you just observe what's happening. If there's a uh, same day injury, for example, if there's going to be a change in the lineup, just get you better situated mentally for the game at hand later that night. And then after shoot around, I like to sometimes just talk to some players or coaches. Uh, sometimes get sound bites, which I like to incorporate into my radio broadcast to break up the monotony. Because on road games, I, I do it solo. Uh, and then I build my spot chart during shoot around. The spot chart being kind of like a cheat sheet, if you mm -hmm. will. Uh, a list of both teams, for example, today's uh, spot chart, obviously consisting of the, the Hornets and the Pacers. Mm -hmm. And I have a manila folder. <laughs> It's a method I've used since I was in college, and um, I have the Hornets on one side, the opponent on the other. I write down all the, the players, the stats, field goal percentage, three-point field goal percentage, free throw percentage, what they're averaging, uh, maybe some tidbits and nuggets on what I want to introduce into the broadcast. And I also write an open, so I, I have an open an opening spiel, mm -hmm. as I like to call yeah, it, yeah. right when I come on the air. So I do all of that generally during shoot-around. When I was about 17, that was the really uh, influential year for me because we had a project in school when I was growing up in New York where you can shadow a certain field that you might want to get into, and for me it was sports. So. As soon as I stepped foot in WFAN Studios, the sports radio station in New York City, and that's the station I grew up listening to, I was completely hooked from that moment on. I knew instantly that I wanted to get into to broadcasting, and especially sports radio. I like to try to stay away from cliche and shtick, ideally, but I do gravitate toward a few words, I suppose, maybe more so than, than usual, uh, like drains it. When there's a basket, um, uh, I use that or that's good. Um, so, swish is another one I <laughs> sometimes will utilize. Yeah. So I, I guess when there's a jump shot or a made basket, for the most part, I'll say one of those three, drains it, swish, that's good. A lot of it now is interactive media, uh, intensive, if you will. Um, where Tornets.com is our website, so every week I'll contribute through an audio podcast, or I'll interview a player, or a coach, or I'll write a blog. So one of those components I'm doing at least one of every single week. For TV, you're kind of guided in terms of what you say because you're, you're looking at a monitor quite a bit, especially during dead balls. Um, you don't actually specifically run down the true play-by-play -play because people can see it. Yeah. So on radio, you have to be extremely descriptive. So for example, on radio, I might say MKG, Michael Kidd Gilchrist, mm -hmm. you know, left corner, dribbles in, pass up top to Walker, who shoots a three, that kind of a thing. TV, you don't have to do that because yeah. people can see mm -hmm. the action. Yeah, of so it's more accentuating the, um, the certain plays, um, it's more of an analyst medium because there's more time for the analyst to divulge information. On radio, it's more play-by-play -play and the analyst has to really be quick yeah. in and out when there is an analyst. So it's a totally different approach, radio versus TV. Yes, um, of course. Again, radio, it's, it's sheer description, imagery, where's the ball, who's scoring it, what's the score, scoring time, you always give in radio. TV. There's usually a, a kind of a mini scoreboard mm -hmm. constantly flowing, yeah. so you don't have to say the score in time all the time. It's there, yeah. so a new approach. <laughs> I mean, I, I could just think of the advantages. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't... Well, I'll say this. For the disadvantages, the only negative is... And it's a big one, though. It's uh, not being able to see my daughter as often as I ordinarily would with a standard 9-to-5 job mm -hmm. because I'm... I'm here at night a lot of the time, obviously, for games. Then there are travel days, and then there are road games. So that's, that's the tough part about it, you know, just being away from my daughter in that case. But 
obviously I wouldn't be doing it if the advantages didn't outweigh the disadvantages. Yes, uh, for me, you know, this is my passion. I absolutely love the NBA. I love radio play by play. I, I, I do enjoy the actual travel in itself. I like breaking up the monotony and visiting different cities every few days. Um, we have a great group of people here in the Hornets, in the front office and with the team, so it's just very enjoyable to be around the team and travel. Um, so for me, I love it. I, I, this is truly more like a hobby than a job. I don't, I don't really deem this work per se, so I'm really, really fortunate to do something that I love.